I don't mind rival fighters trash talking me, but not a shit trainer who used to be a shit boxer. Those are the words of the body snatcher, Dylan White, or the crumb snatcher as some of you call him. Responding to a recent AFL TV interview in which Don Charles talked about his fighter Derek Chisora possibly facing Dylan White again in the future. Dylan, as he often does, took offence to something that Don Charles said in that interview and you see the result here. <laughs> Dylan White is one of the most volatile and confrontational boxers that I've ever seen. This is the kind of guy who could start a riot in an empty room by himself. <laughs> I think somebody, I can remember somebody saying that Dylan White could start an argument with himself in the mirror. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he is. Very volatile, the slightest word out of line as far as Dylan White is concerned, and he's going off on you. Regardless of who you are, whether you've got a good whether you thought you had a good relationship with him or not, the guy is going to go off. <laughs> now, I talked about Gerald Washington not having the natural mentality of a fighter. That's one end of the, of the scale. On the other extreme end of the scale, you have Dylan White, who is all fighter. His mentality is just... It, it, it seems... As, as sometimes to me as if there's nothing else in Dylan White other than fighter. This guy is just all about fighting, all about aggression, all about confrontation, taking offense to things so he can have fisticuffs with somebody. <laughs> That's all Dylan White seems to be about. <laughs> so <clears throat> here we have him responding to Don Charles, getting angry and upset. Um, Dylan White said a few weeks ago, that when the Marius Wack fight fell through, he told Eddie Hearn to make the Chisora fight. And he said that Eddie Hearn spoke to Sauerland and they tried to make the Chisora fight, but it didn't happen. Shortly after that, I believe it was shortly after that, not before, Derek Chisora announced that he was no longer with the Sauerlands. So that's probably why the fight couldn't be made at that time because Chisora was having issues with his uh, promoter at that time, the Sauerlands. So it seems White was willing to take the fight at that stage, at least according to him. Derek Chisora also did an IFL TV interview yesterday where he talked about this fight with Dylan White, saying that Dylan White is a spare wheel. Actually, he said some interesting things, a lot of which I agree with in the IFL interview. He said that Dylan is a spare wheel for Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn don't know what to do with him. And he's just kind of like a, a nuisance for Eddie Hearn. And I can see that being true, to be honest with you. I think Eddie Hearn doesn't know quite what to do with Dylan White. So, uh, you know, interesting interview. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. He then says that Dylan might actually want the fight with him, the rematch with Chisora. He might actually want it, but he's been steered away from it at this point. Now, that part I'm not sure about because Eddie Hearn seemed very keen on the Derek Chisora rematch. But then again, now that Derek Chisora is no longer with the Sourlands, maybe Eddie Hearn is not so keen on that rematch. I don't know, because he has a very good working relationship with the Sourlands. Having to deal with Derek Chisora, or who's Derek Chisora managed by now? I think he's managed by Steve Goodwin. So he, I guess he'd have to deal with Steve Goodwin and Derek Chisora if it came to doing a deal for a Dylan White rematch. Is it as easy dealing with them? as it is dealing with the Sourlands, who he's got a very tight relationship with, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. So, let me know what you think, people. Dylan White, very angry, it seems, or <laughs> very hostile towards Don Charles. I mean, if a day goes by without Dylan White cussing somebody or getting angry with somebody, I mean, it's a, an unusual day. <laughs> You'd have to ask Dylan, are you okay today, bruv? Like, how come you ain't gone off on nobody lately? Are you all right? <laughs> you know that Dylan's all right and he's himself when he's going off on people. So it is what it is. Uh, as far as Don Charles is a boxer, he, as you see, Dylan White posted Don Charles's record and Don Charles's record was something like, well, it, not something like it was, three fights, zero wins, three losses, all three losses by knockout. 
That was apparently his professional boxing record. But you don't have to be a great boxer to be a good trainer or a great trainer. Not at all. There are plenty of guys in all types of different sports, actually, who turned out to be great coaches, but were not particularly good fighters or players themselves. Alex Ferguson is one of the greatest football managers in British history, maybe the greatest. He wasn't a particularly great player. Jose Mourinho is one of the great football managers. He wasn't a particularly good player. In fact, he was a pretty damn terrible player. But turned into a great coach. So you don't have to be talented yourself uh, in order to coach other people uh, to you know and be good at it. And as far as Don Charles as a coach, the proof is in the pudding at the end of the day. You know, I'm not saying he's the worst coach in the world, Don Charles, but I've never rated him that highly. You know, I don't think he is that proficient in teaching fighters the technical aspect of boxing, the skill aspect of boxing. He can get fighters in good shape. He can motivate them. And he's certainly very emotionally connected to his fighters. At least some of them anyway. So that emotional connection helps a lot of fighters when they feel like the, the trainer is 100% behind them, that the trainer would literally, you know, if, if they got into a fight in a dark alley somewhere, that trainer wouldn't run and go nowhere. He'd be with them to the death. Sometimes fighters need that kind of feeling of loyalty from their trainer. And Don Charles is like that with a lot of his, a lot of his fighters. So I'm not going to discount that element. But in terms of what he teaches fighters technically, I don't think he's the best. And I wouldn't go as far as to say his shit necessarily, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't say Don Charles is one of the best trainers around in Britain. Definitely not. Anyway, people, let me know what you think in the comment section below about this particular story. <laughs> let me know how you feel. It's happening, I'm out.